Welcome. The following technical support video will show you how to create your RIP Define settings or the default settings in the Multi RIP Film software. The first thing you'll want to do is open up the Multi RIP Film interface window. This is blue and gray RIP interface window. Go up to the top, click on Settings, and go down to Print Settings. It'll then open up, and for each one of the multi-rip film printers that you've installed, they'll be listed on the left side. In this case, we've only installed the Epson Stylish Pro 4800. If there were multiple ones, they'd be listed. Once you click on that, it'll highlight the corresponding output queue. And it'll also tell you what port that corresponding output queue is associated with. From there, you can go down to the bottom and click Set Print and Ink Settings. This will open the printer and ink settings window. At the top of this, you'll have three tabs. You have a printer setting, you have a color, and you have a paper source. Underneath the print settings, we'll go through and talk about each one of these options. The first one is your resolution. As we mentioned before, you have the ability to change the resolution that you're printing at. This is the one that would be defaulted in the installation video when you first set it up. You have the ability to either mirror the image or create a negative. However, you would not use either one of these if you're printing film positives for screen printing. Underneath the screening, you can allow for document defined screening. This is where you would set up your halftone information and your graphic software program like Corel or Photoshop. If you would like that, you can just go ahead and check that. If you want to keep the same defined screen settings, then you would not want to check that. Underneath the color, you can choose any of the colors that you want to keep as your default settings. There's 16 different spot colors and then there's cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. For each one of those, you then can choose the halftone spot shape that you'd like to use. And there's a list of all of the standard spot shapes that are there. You can also choose your screen frequency and set that or in the screen angle. 45 for your frequency in the screen angle of 22.5 are the defaulted settings that come with the RIP. You can be checking the box down at the bottom that says all colors the same. Whatever your halftone, your screen frequency and screen angles are set to, it'll be the same across the board. We don't recommend using the make separations for printing film positives. We believe that you're better off doing separations, either as spot color separations or by using a third party software. But the capability is in here to provide average separations for printing t-shirts. Underneath the print direction, you can choose whether you want to send the information bi-directional or unidirectional. Unidirectional just means that the ink will be laid down and only going in one direction as the print head goes across the film. Bidirectional means it'll be laid going across back and forth each way. The dot ding curve will allow you to make specific adjustments to the curve by just going and clicking on the, the individual nose and adjusting them there. We recommend that you do not use this unless you're an experience with this type of software as it can become tricky. The final thing we'll look at underneath the print settings tab is the advanced ink configuration. Click on the configure ink density and ink channels button. This will open up our advanced ink configuration. If you have multiple printers, you'll have a list up here that'll be a drop down. The RIP defaults to only using black as the color that'll be pulling ink from. And it has the default ink density for the film that you chose during your installation. If you choose to use more than one ink channel, all you'd have to do is just go ahead and select the channels that you'd like to use. In this case, we're going to choose to use the light black, the light cyan, light magenta, and light light black channels. Currently, as you notice, there are zero ink densities for each one of these. What you'll need to do is just move the sliders even just a little bit on two or more of these and then come down to where it says get recommended density by film type and resolution. By clicking this button, 
you'll then have the ability to choose what film you'd like to use to set up, and then also what resolution. And then it'll tell us what the density is, it's 0.64, and then say apply this density. By clicking the apply this density, it'll bring a window up that'll ask us, do we want to evenly distribute the 0.64 across all active channels? Do we want to set all of the channels to the selected endpoint of 0.64? Or do we want to select only the black channel? In this case, we'll choose distribute evenly across all channels. Click OK. Now what it's done is it's moved our two that we had that were active. If you have to have the channel somewhat active in order for it to work evenly across. So if you add in these other ones and just slide the slider over just a little bit, click on Get Recommendation, Apply, and go back and choose Distribute Evenly between all channels, now it'll change them all to 16. The trick with understanding this process is you have to have a number in this field. If the number is zero, it won't apply it. Just clicking it up here doesn't mean it's going to pull any ink from the black channel. You have to have something there for it. You also have the ability to choose whether you're running photo black ink or matte black ink. Once you've chosen how you'd like your rip set up, then just go ahead and click OK. That's going to be our print settings tab. Go through the color settings. The output profiles, you want to go ahead and keep these all the same for auto select and perceptual, and the same for your input profiles of the default RGB and CMYK. All of this information applies to printing color, and since we're using multi-rip film to print film positives, it will not be necessary. Underneath the paper source tab, this is where you can choose where you want the paper to be pulled from whether it be the paper tray, roll paper, roll paper banner, or the manual feed. In this case, we'll just go ahead and choose roll paper, and then you can choose whether you want it to cut, whether it's a single cut, borderless size only, double cut, borderless size only, or normal cut. Once you've chosen that, just go ahead and click OK. Then click the exit button. And you'll now have set up your rip defined settings for multi-rip film. If you have any additional questions, please contact your distributor or visit the multi-rip website at www.multirip.com. Thank you.